Today I have in a very special watch that has been amazing to be able to spend some time with. The watch is the 60th anniversary Bond Seamaster. This was lent into the channel a few days ago by Omega and it has been a whole lot of fun to wear and experience. The watch has a few different nods to the whole Bond connection. Some of them are very obvious, some not as much, but I only have the watch a short amount of time, so today I wouldn't call this video quite a full review. It's more of an overview of the watch, but let's get to it and check it out. Now this watch was released to celebrate 60 years of James Bond on screen. It was actually about a decade before that, that Casino Royale hit the bookstores. That was the first Bond book. I grew up watching James Bond movies with my father, but it was really Brosnan that was my Bond, possibly partly due to the Golden Eye game. That came out the year after I graduated high school and I definitely logged some hours on that back in the day, and it's the watch from that movie that this is mostly modeled after, especially with the dial. The dial is laser engraved with a wave pattern that's a throwback to the Golden Eye Seamaster. I like the newer style wave dials, but I've always kind of preferred the older, tighter wave pattern like this. It's not exactly the same, but it's very similar, especially at arm's length. I love the dial color. It's a really deep, rich blue. In lower light, it can almost appear black, but goes to more of a vibrant blue depending on the lighting situation. No shortage of text on the dial with the logo and Omega Seamaster Professional filling up the bulk of the upper area and coaxial master chronometer on the bottom area. The skeletonized hour and minute hands are rhodium plated and the lollipop second hand is varnished aluminum. They and the applied markers are filled with loom and we have dual colored loom with the minute hand and the 60 on the bezel having that green loom. The loom isn't crazy bright but it's solid and long lasting. One difference between this and the regular S&P 300s is that 60 minute marker on the bezel. As opposed to the usual triangular marker, they went with the 60 as a tribute to the 60th anniversary. The bezel itself is fairly easy to turn considering the scalloped grips. The action is pretty decent. There is a little bit of play happening with it but it sounds nice and feels good in hand to use. The case is very well finished with sharp lines between the brushed and polished surfaces. Big fan of the Seamaster case and I love those twisted lugs. At the 10 o'clock, we have the love it or hate it helium escape valve. I mean, it's not something hardly anyone will ever use, but it's part of the DNA of the watch, and I think it would look a little odd without it. As for the case back, this is where Omega took the whole James Bond theme up a notch and of this really cool animated silhouette of Bond. The part that's moving is actually connected to the second hand. I'm usually not a big fan of watches that have their movement displayed through a display case back like this with print work or that sort of thing, especially with a beautiful movement like this, but this is awesome to me. The movement is the Metis Certified Caliber 8806, which is a 35 joule movement beating at 25,200 vibrations per hour and with a power reserve of approximately 55 hours. The movement is also magnetic resistant to an impressive 15,000 gauss. The bracelet is pretty well identical to the titanium bond from No Time to Die, other than the fact that this is stainless steel. It's easily the best mesh bracelet I've experienced. The clasp is signed with the Omega logo there, and it's very easily sized. The part here that's etched with Omega flips up, and you can quickly adjust the size. If you're thinking of getting one of these, I'm not sure how this clasp is going to fit on wrist. If you have a smaller wrist, it is almost perfect on my seven and a quarter inch wrist, though it is very comfortable. Size-wise, the watch comes in at a case width of 42.2 millimeters. The lug-to-lug -lug is 49.6 millimeters. 
Lug opening is 20 millimeters and the thickness is 14.3 millimeters, including the sapphire crystal, which is treated with an anti-reflective coating. Water resistance on the watch is 300 meters. And here it is on wrist, and man, what an awesome watch. It is a substantial watch. It's pretty weighty and has a chunky feel on wrist, but it wears comfortably on the mesh bracelet. It looks awesome on it, too. If you're a Bond fan, even if you're not, it's a great watch. I've only had it a short time, but I've been really enjoying it. MSRP on these is 8300 USD, 11300 here in Canadian dollars, which is a premium over the standard models, but overall, I'm impressed with it. Really grateful to have the opportunity to give it a go. Gonna be tough to send this one back, but thanks for taking a few minutes to stop by, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.